today I wanted to come in and talk about what I um, think of when I talk about an introvert friendly business, because as much as that feels self-explanatory to me, it might not be. And so, yeah, I thought I would do a video on it and talk a little bit more about what I mean when I talk about having an introvert-friendly business. Now, if you're here, there's a good chance you know what that means to be an introvert. And the disconnect can sometimes be in the fact that the way that we're taught we need to show up and market and share our work and do online business in particular is very much coming from an extrovert way of doing things. And so what I think that that can lead to is quite a lot of disconnect between like whether or not we actually feel that we can be successful as introverts in business. And it definitely has led to for myself and can lead to doing a lot of things that actually are out of alignment with not just your own energy and your strengths, but also with the goals and your personal values and the things that you really want to do and achieve in your business. So I wanted to share, I've got sort of three things that I think of when I consider what an introvert friendly business is. And the first one is obviously that it is aligned with your energy and your strengths. So if you're aware of what being an introvert is, Technically, it just means that we gain energy from time spent alone. This doesn't mean that we can't speak on stage, that we can't do live video, that we can't do amazing things in our businesses. But what it does mean is that we need different considerations and we have a different capacity for how long and how often we can and want to do this. That's different from maybe what we're taught it should be. I remember I used to follow somebody who had a whole system around doing 30 days of live streams. And that is a really great example of how I just know that I can't show up for 30 days and do lives every single day. I have specific days throughout my week that are lazy days. <laughs> They're makeup free, hair free day, you know, no hair done, just like daggy days. And that is because I know that if I had to show up every single day and do calls and do lives and do videos, that I would just absolutely burn out. And so when we're taking into consideration what an introvert friendly business might look like for us, the most important thing is to actually know yourself and to be really aware of your own strengths, of your energy, of what makes you feel really good, what feels terrible for you and everything in between. And then finding your own baseline, but also starting to branch out a little bit into creating systems and strategies and ways of creating content and ways of interacting with your clients and services and offers that actually support you versus, oh, the big trend right now is to be on TikTok doing doing four, five, six videos a day. And that's how I'm going to build a big following. Like that's the thing that's happening right now. Probably not so much right now, but in the last six months or so, that was sort of the direction that was like, oh, that's where the energy is for the world right now on social media. That doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be in alignment with you and your strengths. And so I know I definitely can't do that. Like I said, I'm not going to be showing up every single day on video. I'm definitely not going to be doing four to six to 10 TikTok videos a day. It's just not going to happen. I already know that about myself. I have no interest in doing that. And I know for my energy, it's just not it's not going to work. It's not going to last. It's definitely not sustainable. And so that is the first thing that you really need to know is you need to know yourself and how your energy works and get really clear on where are your strengths. If you hate video, it's taking a step back and going, do I not want to do video because I haven't had a lot of experience and I'm interested in it, but I know that I'm going to be really not very good at the start? Or is it that you just know that you are so much better and more interested and energized by writing long form content or by taking photos or by sending newsletters or emails to your list? So it's kind of having an awareness of yourself and the things that you're interested in, but also asking the big questions of, am I not doing this because I genuinely have no interest in it and don't want to? Or is it because when we're starting something that we haven't done before, we are naturally going to be pretty bad at it? 
So have a think about that. And it's sort of finding a bit of a mix between the two has been my experience. So it's not just going, oh, well, I am really good at these things, so I'm just going to do them. But it might be going, okay, I've got my bread and butter. I've got my foundations for creating content for my offers, for the way that I'm doing things and showing up. But I'm really, really interested in this new platform, starting a podcast, doing live videos, starting a Facebook group, whatever that might be. And maybe I'm just going to add that into the mix when I'm feeling a little bit inspired and energized. How can I make that work with what I'm already doing? So that is absolutely where I start. When I'm thinking about an introvert-friendly business, it is not what me as an introvert does well and then saying, well, now these are the things that you as an introvert should and must do in order to be successful. It's actually understanding how that works within who you are, what you love, what energizes you and what your natural strengths are or your experiences that you've had in your life. The next one is what feels good for you. And this is something it is going to come, it comes up a million times in Secret Introverts Business in the trainings in there. That is the question that comes before, during, and after every single thing that I teach in Secret Introverts Business in Emerge and Expand with my one-on-one clients. What feels good for you? Because we have become so dependent on external forces and sources for what we should be doing, how we should be feeling, what is popular or trending right now. And as much as we're able to receive all of this information and observe it and see what's going on, as people whose energy is influenced by the energy of other people, which is why we need to spend time alone to re-energize and come back into our own intuition and inner guidance and just re-energize quietly. It is so easy to be swayed and pulled down a track that is actually not even remotely what you want to be doing, what feels good for you, what's in alignment with your integrity and values and what actually you want to do. And suddenly you can be six months down the path and be thinking, how did I get here? I absolutely hate what I do. I dread it. I resent it, which is why We're wanting to leave jobs and start our own business in the first place. So it's starting to be discerning about what we're actually consuming, who we follow, where we're finding ourselves be influenced and what it is that we're seeing in the people that we follow that we desire or that we're drawn to. Because you might look at someone and think, oh my goodness, their business is so amazing. What is it about that that you are particularly drawn to? What is it that you like the idea of or the look of? Because it's not necessarily going to be the thing that they're actually doing and teaching. It might be something completely different altogether. And I highly recommend taking some time away from the apps, shutting everything down, especially if you're in a place where you're feeling unsure about what you're doing, you're feeling disconnected from it. That is the time where our defenses are down a little bit and we can be so easily drawn into somebody's amazing marketing and messaging and making decisions from a place of that uncertainty, that unconfidence and being kind of like, oh, I don't really know. So I will just, you know, spend $10,000 on this and hopefully that will fix all my problems. Obviously, I have different things that I offer. And so it is probably seems counterintuitive to recommend this, but I I will say to every single person who has emailed me, who asked me questions, oh, is this going to be right for me? Should I join your membership? Should I do this? Don't quite know what to do. I always say what's more important to me is that you work out what's right for you. And if that means not buying my thing or joining my program or whatever that is, that is absolutely fine with me. That is not the kind of business that I want to run where I'm going to sit and talk somebody into working with me when it's out of alignment with how they're feeling it or they're making a decision from that place. We need to focus more on what feels good for us, what feels in alignment, what our values and our mission and our vision are for the work we're here to do, for the business we're trying to create, and less time looking at what other people are doing, what their success is, what's working for them, because we have to remember that what works for some people isn't necessarily going to work 
for us. And when we lean into our strengths, when we know our mission, when we have purpose and direction, we're less concerned by what everybody else is doing and we get more focused on our own path. And that is where the magic happens. That is where the soul aligned clients come from. That is where we start bringing in or calling in people. We start to see momentum happening when we are so much in our lane that we're not paying any attention to anyone and what they're doing around us. That's not to say that we should just shut everything out and turn everything off. But it's again, it's about like when we're solidly in our lane, we're less influenced by that energy out there. I don't know if you've noticed, I have definitely noticed this in my business over the years that when my confidence is feeling low, when I've maybe had a few things not go the way I hoped they would, or I'm just in a low energy place, that is when I'm most susceptible to sign up for something that actually is so out of alignment or make a decision in my business that isn't in alignment with my goals and values. And when I am in my place and that is anchored in and it is good, that is when the real momentum happens. That is when amazing things start happening. That is when the most perfect people that I can support the best come my way. So have a think about that. Next time you find yourself in that place, I know right now with Black Friday happening and this time of year, there are so many sales, there's so many opportunities and it is the time that we need to be super discerning and making those decisions from a a really aligned place. And that kind of leads me into my third point. I actually kind of already (laughs) addressed it that when we're focusing on business decisions, on opportunities, on offers, on systems and the way that we're doing things and sharing our work and showing up, that we want to be following in the direction of what is creating more energy and momentum for me. So if you find yourself doing something that feels like you're sort of like, oh, I'll try this out because it's, you know, maybe it's good, but it just feels the whole way like it's really hard, like you're pushing really hard and you're not, you're not feeling any good energy and momentum, but you're not seeing any results as an ongoing of what that decision was, that is a really important time to take a step back and evaluate and review what's really happening here. Do I feel aligned with this? In Emerge and Expand the other day, we were talking about pricing and how to decide what to price your offers at. And that is as much a part of this as anything, that if we are pricing something super low that we aren't happy with, that we feel like we're going to be resentful about, that energy comes through in every time we talk about that offer, every time we're sharing it through the sales page, through the way that we show up for those people. And when we price something too high and we don't feel confident about that, that also comes through as well. And so if you're doing something like a 30-day challenge or a five-day challenge even, and it feels like a slog the whole way, not a little stretch, not something that's like, oh, I've never done this before. This is a little bit scary and out of my comfort zone, but something that feels heavy the whole way through, that it feels like a lot of hard work, that it feels like you're not getting any engagement or reciprocation back from the amount of energy you're putting into it. That is a really great time to look back and go, okay, is this strategy in alignment with me? Is this working? What did I do or not do that has has made it feel this way is there something else that I could try next time that's going to feel more in alignment and sometimes we make we do things and we go oh I'm never doing that again I hated that (laughs) that is also a really great way to know whether something's in alignment or not but it is really important and helpful to just take that step back and go, okay, I signed up for this because I saw all these amazing testimonials about people who are making so much money and it's taking them, it's so easy for them. Why does it feel hard for me? And this is why, you know, I can be critical of the online business, especially in the coaching world, that people use not unrealistic, but results that are uncommon as a way to market to people who may not get those results. And I think it's really important for ourselves to be super discerning and go, okay, instead of, oh, there's something wrong with me, looking and going, is this strategy in alignment with who I am, how I work best, what I want, what my goals are, and what my previous experience and strengths and all of those things are? And when we look at that, that gives us the ability to actually go, ah, 
No, but how do I find the strategy? How do I find the system? How do I find the business model or the offer or the platform, the social media platform or format that is going to work for me? So they are my three things. When I think about having an introvert friendly business, one that supports your strengths and energy as an introverted person, even if that looks different from the way that everybody else is doing it. It is focusing more on your own alignment, what feels good for you than any external focus or circumstances, what everyone else is doing, what you're seeing is the trend right now. Focusing more on our own alignment than focusing on what else is going on out there. And the third thing is that it is building energy, not taking energy away from you, that when you show up, whether it's to do a live, whether it's to launch a new offer, that it is in a way that is actually building energy and excitement for you instead of taking away and draining you because no one is trying to leave their full-time job or leave their career to start a business to just create another circumstance and situation that is what they're trying to get out of except without the regular paycheck. Nobody wants that. And so let's make sure that we're building businesses that support us, that are sustainable and that are in alignment with our goals and strengths and values. So I hope you find that helpful. I hope it gives you some things to think about, especially at the moment when there is a lot of noise out there. Obviously, this is the week that I've launched Secret Introverts Business. And so that is really what we're focusing on in the membership. I have made it super, super accessible. Normally in this industry, in particular in the business coaching space, this would be a program that is thousands of dollars to join and it's just $7 a month US. It is because of that reason that it's priced at that point. I have personally spent tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars on programs that were not aligned with for me at for a start. I obviously always learn things and I'm able to bring that for my coaching clients and my members. I'm able to bring all of the things, all of the mistakes I've made along the way, all of the programs I've signed up for. And I just know that There's a lot of things you need to be thinking about and investing in right now. And I want to be able to support people to understand their energy and start to make decisions from that place first so that when you are building your business, you're doing it in a way that is in alignment. You are feeling comfortable selling your offers because you have an offer that you're super excited about and you've got some support in how you're going to invite people into that offer by doing it in a way that doesn't feel super salesy and awkward to you. All of those things we have created in Secret Introverts Business. There is so much more to come every month. There is another live training drop and templates, resources, and tools are I am I just am so excited about what's coming next year is starting to shape up to be really exciting in terms of what is going to be in there. And like I said, it's only $7. I don't want to do the scarcity thing. I don't want to say you have to join today because that price is about to go 10 times up. That is the price of the membership. It will not be changing. The only thing that will change is each month there will be content that's available only for the month. And so if you if there's something that you are looking for, if you're interested in, that will obviously change each month. So that's, that's part of the membership. If you have any questions about it though, and there have been a few questions of people just sort of going, oh, is this? I don't know if this is the right thing for me. I've had a few messages about that. And I will say the same thing to anyone who was wondering themselves, as I said to every single person that I spoke to, that it is so much about what feels right for you. I have purposely priced this in a way that if you sign up and it's seven dollars and you it doesn't end up being what you wanted, you have not lost ten thousand dollars. You've not lost five. You've not lost a thousand dollars. It's seven dollars, and then you can also always talk to me and give me feedback because I want to make this space something that feels really good and actually is helpful for you. And so any feedback or suggestions of what you're looking for, we will be able to include that in the group as long as it's in alignment with the direction of the group. If you're looking for certain templates, if you're looking for certain trainings or even guest teachers, there will be an opportunity for you to share that feedback so that we can shape the membership around that. But yeah, if you are feeling that pull, if you're feeling like, oh, maybe this is something I would be interested in, what I really encourage you to do is start practicing that discernment and that self 
self-inquiry before you even join us and feel into what feels right for you. Feel into, hey, what's what's my hesitation right now? What's stopping me? Because I think that that's also a really interesting thing for us to start observing about ourselves and then make a decision that feels right for you. I'm not going anywhere. The group's not going anywhere. If you join this month, you do get the content ecosystem included, which is $37 normally. Again, you will be able to buy that separately at a later date if it doesn't, if, if now isn't the right time for you. Next month, which is next week, we will be moving into a bit of yearly review and planning for 2023. That will kind of be the focus of the month if that's something that you're interested in. So I'm giving you a heads up so that you know that's what's to come if you're trying to make a decision as to whether it's right for you right now or not. Any other questions, any thoughts, any feedback, please let me know. I am here for you and um yeah I can't wait there's there's a bunch of people who have already joined us in the group I'm so excited about what's to come so let me know but I hope that this gives you something to think about when you're making decisions in your business when you're choosing offers and deciding on strategies that you want to take of how you can do it in a way that is in alignment with your energy that really nourishes and supports your needs first and never hear anyone talk about this you have to be the thing you think about first because if you aren't taking care of yourself and managing your own energy and needs. It is very hard to keep showing up day in and day out and through the ups and downs of online business if you haven't got that bit sorted because you burn out. Trust me, I walked away from my business for three years. I have done that. I've made those mistakes and I want to make sure that you don't make them either. I hope that this was helpful for you and I will talk to you all really soon. Bye.